Hey guys, how's everybody doing? So I would be, before we get kind of jamming on the presentation, I just want to quickly hear your name and why you're here. I'm uh, Mike Reynolds. Uh, we have a complicated product to sell and I need to find a simple way to describe it cool. in a short video. Uh, I want to learn how to fish to invest to raise money. Cool. I'm going to be it. What do you have to say? Cool. No pressure though. <laughs> I am Sydney, and I'm just hoping to make a story to sell better to my clients. Cool. I'm Lauren, um, just to learn different ways to sell uh, products. Awesome. Well, who are your clients? Tenants. Tenants. So you're in real estate? Yes. Okay. Hi, I'm Ian. Hey. I'm here to learn how to attract more customers. Attract more customers? Doing what kind of business do you have? Well, online, several logical counseling. Cool. I'm just here to learn how telling a story can make it. Awesome. Love that. <laughs> My name is Yushan. Uh, I'm running a startup called Chuhu. It's an online platform where users can easily customize their home meals for local chefs. And I'm looking for getting more strategy on telling customers sorry to get them. Home meals for lo from local chefs? Yeah, like customization. Cool. Love it. Yeah. Hey. Is Eduardo? Eduardo. I had a creator for a, a creative agency. Great, perfect. All right, so cool. Did we miss anybody? No, good. Everybody's awesome. Oh, man, it was so funny. I was walking in tonight, and he's like holding this sign up, and he's like, "Are you here for the event?" And I was like, "I'm him." And he's like, "Awesome." <laughs> that's me. That's my name on the screen. So um, I'm super excited. It's a diverse crowd. First of all, thank you so much for spending your um, what night is it? <laughs> Tuesday night with us here. It's late. I know you could be doing a million different things. So. I really appreciate your hour. I will make it as valuable as possible. I'm gonna kind of jam out for 20 minutes, 30 minutes talking about what I see in the branding, storytelling world, marketing world. Talk a little bit about the experience that I had that kind of like brought me here. And then I really wanna take the last 15, 20 for like very individual questions. Um, what should my first 10 seconds of a video sound like? You know, how do I find more real estate clients? Uh, how can I use a brand to attract more real estate clients? What are some Facebook strategies for B2B sales? All of these things are things that we think about all the time. Um, as Sid or Santa or so many introductions, I'm very grateful, um, said we, we have a marketing, communications, and branding company here in New York City called The Life in Shorts. We're actually, everyone's like, when we call them, we're like, hey, we're here with The Life in Shorts. And like, I don't want life insurance. <laughs> so we're thinking through rebranding the name as well. Um, but um, we, we service a number of different clients, ranging from some of the biggest tech brands in the world, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, Credit Karma, to startup companies that are raising VC funds or trying to get new users, to the entrepreneur that says, I have an idea and I want to be able to monetize it, but I don't really exactly know what the steps or the process or what I should be thinking about when I'm creating a brand. Um, and so we do all of those for clients. and then. I get invited to speak all over the world about this idea of marketing, branding, storytelling, and communications. So, um, and it, it's, it's all, the thing that I like about the thing that we're doing is that, you know, you guys know this, there's a lot of speakers out there, right? And there's a lot of speakers that are basically talking about things that they're never really implementing. They just heard something and then they start saying it. And so the thing that I really pride myself on standing in front of you tonight is that everything that I'm gonna say to you, we've either tried on our own brand or on brands of our clients, and we've seen some degree of success. Um, so really quick level of, you know, kind of to level up the background of wh who I am and how I ended up here. I'm a guy from the middle of America, Peoria, Illinois. Anybody from the Midwest? Nobody from the Midwest. This never happens. You, South Dakota is not the Midwest, but that's awesome. When I graduated from law school, I thought to myself, it'd be very cool to become the mayor of New York City. And that was kind of a large motivation as to why I went to law school. And what I quickly realized was that at 26, I wasn't going to become the mayor of New York City. So the best thing to do would be to go work for him. So I worked for Mike Bloomberg's re-election campaign in northern Manhattan. And we were, I was in charge of recruiting volunteers. And so that was kind of the first taste that I had of the power of the story, right? Because if you're asking someone to give their time for free for you for four to five to six months, 
you have to be very clear as to why that's worth it for them. So there was a whole lot of different storytelling elements happening, and that was the first time that I saw, wow, there is real value in story. We ended up recruiting a ton of people, like 600 in the course of four months. Bloomberg and his chief of staff, his campaign manager, Bradley Tusk, called me into the office after the election and said, you are amazing, we want to keep you in the administration, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to do speech writing, I want to do storytelling. So he paired me up with one of his commissioners, we did, I worked with him for two and a half years, a lot of speech writing, a lot of storytelling, etc. What I realized was my skill was taking a lot of information. You know, they would give me 50, 60, 70 different pieces of paper and say, turn this into a two to three minute talk. Right? Probably some of the similar stuff you guys are dealing with, figuring out what is the creative. There's so much information. How do we get it? The people that don't understand what I'm saying, how do I, right? How do I get that thing? So that was kind of an aha moment for me. And I thought to myself, well, if the politicians of the world need this, then certainly the business people of the world also need this. What I realized was there was just a lot of people that didn't have a clue how to tell a story. So that's kind of what I've been able to figure out. And I'm going to talk to you guys tonight about kind of the three big opportunities that I see right now for all of us from an array of different experiences in the branding marketing world. Okay, does that sound good? Questions so far? And if you guys have questions throughout, feel free to just throw the hand up, this is super informal. So, there's a few different things that I think is important. Number one, I think that people are missing a huge opportunity because we don't fully understand a critical difference in what is a di the difference between what is branding and what is sales. So many people confuse the two things. And so if you are a solo entrepreneur or if you're working for a creative agency, what I'm about to tell you is super important and apply it however you can to your own situation. But there is a massive difference between branding and sales, right? So many people, and, and I want you to literally think about your social media right now. So many people are using social media to sell things, which I'm a huge fan of. I think social media is an incredible place to sell things. The problem is most of your companies or most of your personal brands are disproportionately outweighed on the selling things versus the giving value. You know, so many, I get to speak at all these different conferences, I check out the hashtags on my way there and so many people are like, buy my product, buy my book, buy my thing, buy my thing, check this out, check out my course, here's another listing, here's another listing, here's another listing. And the noise, you get a, a maybe one, maybe two chances with people and all of a sudden I'm thinking to myself, it's just constant sales, right? So what I want you to think about is how can you be different? How can you departmentalize these two things between a, what is a brand and what is a sale? 99% of my stuff is free. Free, free, free. And then the second I go to sell something, I straight up hit you over the head with it and say, I am about to sell you something. The worst kind of branding is the branding that offers value knowing that in three more pieces of content, I'm gonna offer you three more pieces of content and in the back of my head I already know that all those content pieces I'm stacking up so that I can make you a sale. When your value proposition, when your, value, when your intent to be valuable is in the back of your head because you know that in one week or one month or three months you are calculating and you are manipulating to know that I'm gonna make a sale in one to two to three emails you're not branding, you are selling. So don't, and listen, if you wanna sell, if you wanna spend all your time selling, I'm not telling you how to run your business. I'm just telling you, if you actually want to build a brand that people trust, that people love, then you have to be aware that they're different things. And trying to conflate the two things is gonna end you up in a bad place, and I don't want you to be in a bad place, right? So I want you, just us to have an honest conversation with what is branding. Something not to talk about Coke and Pepsi and all that stuff. One of my favorite brands is Nike. The thing that I think about when I think about Nike is inspiring music, motivational commercials, just do it. And for that moment in time, no matter what was happening, if I was the smallest guy or the fastest guy or the biggest guy or the dumbest guy or the smartest guy, for that moment in time, I felt like anything was possible. And so when I walked into Foot Action or Foot Locker or whatever, I would look at the Nikes, and I would look at the Adidas's, and I would look at the New Balances, but New Balance and Adidas and Under Armour and all these different brands didn't ever make me feel like I could just do it. Nike never once sent me an email saying our shoes, our Jordans are on sale for $99.99, ever. They built a real brand, right? 
That's part number one. So I really want you to think about the fact that branding and sales are two different things. And the second you go in for a sale, the second you go in for a sale, you lose a little bit of brand. Wrap your head around that for a second. The second I go in for a sale, I lose a little bit of brand. I'm not saying that that's wrong or right. I'm just saying that's, if you're really serious about building a brand, what you have to think about. If I give you 100 hours of free time, and at the end I say, by the way, no more free time, you have to get into my mastermind class for $10,000 a month, the last, hundred, the last 100 pieces of free advice I gave you are so, so quickly out of your mind, the only thing you think is, oh, that's the guy selling the mastermind. And that's just how it works, right? Now, if you've offered enough value, maybe they'll join the mastermind. That's what Gary Vee does. Three years, every three years he gives a book and you buy it. I'm gonna buy his book because I feel bad because he gives me, he, he's completely won with his thesis on me because the dude gives out everything for free. And so now it's time to buy a book, I'll buy a book. I'll probably buy more than one. That's good branding, right? Whereas other guys that we talk about all the time, she has, so I go through all my emails, she bombard me with emails. Hey, did you, you missed my offer, you missed my offer, you missed my offer, you missed my offer. And I'm like, ah. So you never really cared about the, the, the bond. You, know, you just didn't care. You cared about selling me something disguised in branding. Right, does it make sense? Cool, so everybody take a look at that, all right? Second thing that I want everyone to think about that I think is super important and super rad is the gatekeeper that, that once was is no longer there. In other words, before, you know what, let me back up a second before I even go into that because it's kind of connected to point two. Point two, I think that every single person in this room has an immense opportunity to do something that has never ever before been possible to do. And I think every single one of you, regardless of if it's in your individual capacity or working for the company that you work for, has the opportunity to become what's called a media, what I think about as a media company. And, and listen, I'm like literally everything I'm about to tell you, I'm doing myself and I'll tell you how it works out and it's insane how much this works out. Right now, you have to understand that the person you're trying to get to is so busy and is so ADHD and is living in different places, right? If you're trying to go B2B sales, they're in LinkedIn or they're on Facebook. If I'm trying to get to like, I don't know, influence tenants, like I don't, making this up for you, but like they're on Instagram, they're on Snapchat. So they're on all these different places, right? The question becomes then, are you? And what I can almost guarantee is that a very small percentage of the people in this room are everywhere. And when I say everywhere, I mean on Facebook and LinkedIn and Snapchat and Instagram and a podcast and, and, and doing a Medium article and doing a blog and doing a vlog and doing everywhere. Now, you might think to yourself, but Brian, that's so much information overload. But the truth is, you're in one place and you're in another place and you're in another place and you're in another place. And even if I'm in two places or three places, I'm not gonna organically see your stuff anyway. So you have to, you have to understand the algorithm that Facebook is smart enough and Instagram is smart enough to not bombard their users because it's why Twitter is now losing relevance com compared to Facebook and Instagram because Twitter didn't figure that out. Yes, tell me. Um, Melanie. Hey, Melanie. It's a great question. I would, I would think about it like this. Use all that content to lead to the conversation, right? Like, I'm, still, I'm a big fan of marketing. I'm a big fan of like getting in front of people. I just think you can use it. So give me specifically what do you do? I just did a massive email blast. Yep. What is your service that you offer? Um, I teach meditation. You teach meditation? Yes. Good. So what I would do is I would basically use myself as a media company to funnel people into a place, right, where, listen, 
I don't want people to get I'm glad you asked the question because I don't want people to get confused that I think selling is bad. You have to sell if you want to be in business. You have to make money, right? But, but, that, but what you said, I did feel like I felt, I felt it as I was sending it out to people. Like, you're like, like, I don't want to do this. So what if instead of sending out, this is my services, what if instead you sent something out and said, hey, I'm about to launch a YouTube show, or I'm about to, because you, you said you're branding a podcast, right? You just said it to me. I'm about to brand a podcast. I want to hear from you. What are the topics that I should do? Different conversation, right? What, do that next week and watch what kind of responses you get differently. Because if you email the thousand people and said, hey, I'm doing meditation services, who wants in? It's like, unless I've been really feeling you for the last whatever month, two months, three months, you're probably gonna get a very, very low number. But if all of a sudden your podcast becomes insane about meditation, you start collaborating with people that have, have big audiences, you start to do workshops, you start to, you have to find, a, you know, meditation is becoming, it's, it's a huge market. I mean, it's gonna be like the next big, I'm, I'm bullish on meditation. I think it's gonna be huge, this, especially the more technology that we have because our minds are just too damn busy, including like, I can't sleep at night because my mind is so fast. If somebody could figure out how to get to me on meditation, I'd be eternally grateful. So, you need to figure out what are the pain points. You need to ask questions like, why can't you sleep at night? What would help you sleep at night? If I made a podcast for your last 10 minutes of the night, would you listen to it? Now all of a sudden, what would you like to hear? Is it stories that I invent? Is it my day? Is it things that I've learned that, that are techniques? What is it, right? Now all of a sudden, I'm starting to build trust and build trust and build trust. And then a year from now, when you lead a meditation retreat in the Poconos, you've given me 52 weeks of podcasts and I'm 100% much more likely to buy your retreat than from your email that you sent me a year before after not hear, having heard from you in five years. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah so building a relationship. So building like a real relationship. I view social media only as a knock on the door, as a shake of the hand, as a hug. Like I'm, I'm not selling stuff on social media to the extent that other people are trying to, which is why I think people are coming to me because everything, to the point where people are like, dude, how can I work with you? Like, I love your stuff, what can I do with you? When that moment happens, you're like, yes. So you need to think about what is the value that you can offer and are you, so another question you have to ask yourself is, how do you maintain yourself, how do you maintain your bills, right? Because let me tell you something else, this thing is a long thing. This is a long, branding is a long process. Branding properly is a long process, right? So just think about those questions. Yeah, sure. Um, all right, cool, so then, and we'll have more time for questions too at the end. But, um, so, so that's the difference between push and pull marketing. So basically, you know, you have to understand, number one, everybody's attention is everywhere. You have to figure out why they're there and what they want. Number two, you have to go there, turning yourself into a media company. Number three, what happens with that is you become much more of a push, uh, a pull marketer instead of a push marketer, which becomes much, much more effective. And then the third part or fourth part, whatever part it is, is you have to understand that the beauty of building a brand, and I think about this a lot, you know, branding is such an overused word, right? Everybody wants to build a brand, right? But most people want to build a brand and they really have no idea why, right? Like for your meditation services, do you want to become a full-time meditation coach? Do you want to build a meditation studio? Do you want to be a consultant? Do you want to train athletes? On, like who do you want to work with? Why do you want to create this brand, right? And what people don't understand yet, and they will, and we're starting to see it more and more and more, especially like with athletes and hip hop artists and to some extent entrepreneurs, but more so with like athletes and hip hop artists, is that the brand becomes the business. The brand becomes the influence. The brand becomes the, 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 the bargaining chip that you have to do what you want. In other words, no one can say no to you anymore when you have the brand. And to build the brand, you don't have to ask permission from anybody. In the past, to, get a sh to do a reality TV show like I'm about to do in Latin America, I would have had to beg Univision or Telemundo or all the other stations to accept me, to take my idea, and then to highly censor what I was gonna do. They strip you. I've seen it. I've worked with celebrity people 
in movies, and I've worked with celebrity people in TV shows, and they strip you of your of everything that you want. It's the same reason I, I ultimately decided not to become a politician, because in order to get anything done that you really wanted to get done, you had to compromise so much of what you didn't believe. And it's the same thing from people that go into like traditional media and traditional television and traditional movies. You have to play the part. They tell you the lines, you memorize the lines, and you do the lines. Now, if that's, a, if that's your thing, I was with a bunch of actors last night, they love that. They love playing different characters. I'm not trying to tell you what your thing should be. I'm just trying to tell you that this is the best time ever, ever, ever to create a brand because you have to wait for nobody. Nobody. You can start today, camera directly into the, your face directly into the camera. My friend in the back here, right here, yesterday, she literally said, I want to, I, we met at Starbucks yesterday. She said, I want to start creating more content. I want to do more health, wellness, life coaching, meditation. I'm an actor, I'm a dancer. And I said, do a video. And she's like, I can't do a video. I don't have any equipment. I don't have any. I said, take out your phone. And we literally shot a video in Starbucks right there. First video, direct to camera. And the thing is this, every single person here can do that, right? And so stop waiting for anyone to tell you what you can and cannot do. Maybe even including your director. Like there's just ways to, to, to bring these things up. And then, so that's really what, I, what I'm obsessed with. Um, and then also you have to understand the, the, the kind of the last piece of this talk before, I, and I do want to get into like very, very specific questions with you guys, is you have to understand that Facebook right now is just, is an incredible, incredible platform to do what you want to do, whether you're in a B2B or a B2C environment, because the Facebook ad product is so, so sophisticated. Let me just show you this, guys. I did a video a month ago in front of the Christmas tree down on Wall Street, and I put that up, and I spent like $13, $14, $2 a day for two weeks. And I targeted very specific groups of people in my hometown, Peoria, Illinois. The video, within three days, went completely viral. And I got invited on local news, I got invited on local radio, I got featured the next day on the news, the mayor of the city of Peoria emailed me, the video was now up on the cityofpeoria.com's website with $14. In the past, I would have made a nice little video in front of the Christmas tree, I would have showed it to my grandma and my mom when I got home, they would have loved it, they would have shared it with their 13 friends, and that would have been the end of it. We are living in the single greatest time to create a brand and have people, at the most relevant people that you could ever imagine, see the stuff that you're creating. And it's just a, it's a total gift. Um, and I just hope that we all take advantage of it because it's, it's right now. In two, three, four years when Macy's and Coca-Cola and Pepsi and all the brands that Santa said start to figure out that instead of spending all this money on TV commercials and billboards, they should be spending it in Facebook, all of a sudden we are out of luck because they have a lot more money than us and they will drown us out. And they won't drown us out, but it becomes much more expensive to play. What costed me $14 to make a video go viral in Peoria will now cost me 144. So now is the time. Now is the time to build something. Now is the time to get serious about branding. Now is the time to realize that you have a lot of power to get in front of the people that you want to get in front of, and there's just no reason to wait. So um, I'm also like, I think that building, like, I think every company is a media company now. I totally agree with the thesis there. Um, what I'm having trouble with right now is, like, I, I mean, I have like the ideas behind like, the content and everything all together, yep. right? I mean, I have the vertical and the niche all figured out. Um, what I'm wondering is, like, how did you go about like finding the man? Right, like where did you like you know find this awesome gentleman right here? Like, I mean, are, do you Thai restaurants? Do you have, are you relying on like the recruiting prowess from uh, from like the Bloomberg days? Um, like, I mean, do you use any like digital platforms to source interns and things like that? I mean, what's like what's your um, great question? The manpower is huge. There's a couple different ways you can do it. You either hire them or you can get them to work for free, right? Both work. I don't care about any of that stuff. I don't care about resumes. I don't care. Here's what I care about, right? I care about do I like you? Like, that's really important. We spend 60, 70 hours a week together. Do you have an appetite to learn? This woman is like ferocious with learning. And are you willing to be in a very fast paced environment in terms of like, we're all like, there's always stuff thrown at us that we have to adjust to? So, to answer your question, 
you, if you're in a position to hire people, then just start putting it out to your, fr for me, I, I found Nick through a mutual friend, Santa Cold emailed me on LinkedIn, uh, we have the Columbia team I found through mutual, everyone that is on my team, mutual friends. The internship, so first of all, I think I would say is go and find friends that you respect because if they refer you somebody, they're probably gonna be pretty good. Um, I think that you know the typical traditional recruiter thing, it works, I just have never done it, so I can't really speak to it. The intern piece is interesting because we've had kind of a revolving group of interns for the past year, and some of them have been um, from university and other people have been out of university, but I, to be honest with you, I have no idea how we got, how do we get them? She, she, yeah, how did you get them? Career service people. Yeah. Cool. So career service people from universities. You know, here's the key. And, and, and you can fake this, but you'll get caught. The key is you have to make it as exciting as you can for these people that are working for you, for paid or for free, because there's a lot of opportunity out there. In New York City, there's a lot of opportunity. But you have to basically be so excited about what you're doing that everyone around you is excited as well. And when I do that at my best, our team operates at its best. And when I'm tired and when I'm slow, our team operates at its worst. So it's all on you. So you have to know that going in, the more exciting you make something seem and then actually execute on that excitement, the better off you're gonna be. We have this thing and it could be cool for you. Lost, lost you just lost them, right? This whole thing that I'm about to do in, in Latin America is really fascinating to me because I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to my Bloomberg days. It's the same thing I did with Bloomberg, which is I got people so excited about what that Washington Heights office meant. It was 500 square feet Washington Heights office. We didn't pay them anything. And people, some people gave like 50 hours a week. It was all because I was like, this is the best thing that you can do for your community. This is the best thing that you can do for your family. This is the best thing that you can do to build a, your, uh, so many people, you know, and this just goes back to like, actually knowing what people want. So many people, which is why, uh, was it Holly, is that, what, was your, what was your name, sorry? sorry Melanie. Melanie, which is why I said to Melanie, like, ask them what they want. When I said to these people and the volunteers, like, what do you want from this experience? You know what so many of them told me? I just want to belong somewhere. I, got, I have no friends, I have no family, I feel lost. I just want some place to come every day and to feel like I'm doing something. Right? So you have to figure out what do they want. Like she wants to be, a, she wants to be Oprah. Nick won't let me even do a Snapchat story with him. She can't, she's like, oh the camera, Whee! And Nick's like, Brian, stop. So you have to figure out what everybody wants. What does an intern want? Right? And you can figure that out, it's the same thing. Then you can give them, and the wants change all the time. One minute she wants to work 80 hours a week, the next minute she wants to go on like five dates this week. Straight up. She wants to leave at five, Brian, I have a date at 5.30, I'm leaving. Okay, fine. Check in, check in, check in. Make sense? Oh, other questions. Yeah, sure. Um, in terms of like, but let's just go to like content, like yeah. we were talking about businesses and whatnot. Yep. Um, you look at content, I don't want to say selling content, but actually engaging your audience into like content that you post online, whether it's a video, whether you're a singer, or you put out a song. Uh, yeah, like a yeah. cover. Yep. Um, would you say the process of social engagement, how to get those people to view your video, which is probably something, could be something free, is that considered like, is that selling or is it, is it branding? No, it's, it's branding. It depends on what you're, why you're having them consume the content. But look, give me an example of what you're thinking. So let's say I'm an artist, right? I'm an artist. Let's say I'm an artist. Or if you want to just use your own case, if you have your... No, okay, so you're an artist. Yeah, I'm an artist. Yep. I kind of want to kind of gauge a, a ton of followers because I want to be an aspiring songwriter or singer yep. or whatnot. And I put out content yep. that I kind of want people to watch, but I don't want to just say, hey, go to my YouTube and look at this because, you know, to her point, it might seem like it's, on, it's, a, free, it's a free form of content, but I feel, feel like I'm telling you to only engage me to come watch this piece yep. of content. Yep. Um, how is that? How do you differ? Like, so there's a, there's a, um, it's a good question. There's a couple of things there that I think about, and this is super important for anybody that's in the social media game at all. First of all, 
the numbers themselves are way, way, way less important than society would lead you to believe. What do I mean by that? You know, we put up, a, I put out a song a day. I put up a piece of content every single day on YouTube. It's a video, it's a daily vlog kind of thing. Sometimes it gets thousands of views, sometimes it gets 12. But you just don't know if one of those 12 people is the person that puts you into a different world, and that's happened, right? We've had crazy opportunities come from one person that watched a YouTube video that got 22 views. So don't get caught up in the numbers game. It really is, uh, it's a myth that that matters so much. So, and by the way, so many people are buying followers, so many people are buying followers, that you can't even trust that, right? Second thing I would say is, in terms of your question of getting the people there and how does that feel, listen, I think that you gotta just put stuff out there that people like. And you, I, I would do two different things. I would say, do two different experiments. Number one, don't push it at all, right? Or number two, do kind of passive publicity, meaning Facebook advertising, or even better, collaborate with other people that have the followings. So if I'm an artist, I'm, th I'm actually thinking about what other artists that are out there that I can collab with so I can do something really cool with them and then that gets more exposure. Make sense? Cool. Any other final questions, thoughts, concerns? Yes? How do you sell something that no one wants to talk about? What is it? Real estate. No, that, I think that you're wrong with that. I think that everybody, so how do you sell it? How do I sell yes. it? Yes. What, what are you selling? Well, it depends if I'm trying to get their business or if I like, represent the landlord. So what, okay. So if I represent the landlord, it's easier because I can say like, I have this opportunity, would you like it? But if I'm trying to sell it to you, trying to get it, I say like, I have the resources, would you like this piece of information? But usually people say, I don't want to talk about my lease or it's up in five years, like stop bothering me. Oh, so you're going after properties. No, potential tenants. So people in a building that I see their leases up, so we either want to move them or help them renew. But most of the time I find that people just don't want to talk about it or don't want my help. The people that do want to talk about it, mm -hmm. why do they want to talk about it? What are the things that are interesting to them about this conversation? Um, so first of all, the, the ones that are like, I don't want to talk about it, all right, nice to meet you, ciao. The ones that, the 5% that do want to talk about it, I'd figure out in that 5%, what are the one or two or three things that they really care about with that conversation? Mm -hmm. And then I'd start to create content around that. Okay. So what are those three things? Mostly or just give me one thing. Timing, Time. the lease is up. The lease is up, and then what's the, but what's the issue? Either they need more space or less space. And that's the, so the timing of the lease is the pain point? Yeah, usually that's when people will actually like want to talk to you about it because they're realizing that they have to either move or renew and they need your help. Okay, and so what, and, and, and the rest of the people are like, oh, it's in four years, to come back to me then? So what I would do is I would try to figure out, and I don't know if this is, I don't know how this works with Facebook, but there, there is possibly an option. So like for example, Facebook advertising can tell me if you are pregnant in the next 12 months. And I can sell you a baby bottle. So it would be interesting if there was something like that with leases. Mm -hmm. And if you could figure that piece out, if there's a way to figure out how to know with using Facebook's data of which businesses are six months to 12 months out mm -hmm. from a lease being over, then you shoot a commercial and say, I know that your lease is up in six months, I got big news for you, go into your thing. And then you Facebook advertise targeting those people. Now all of a sudden it's showing up in those people's feed and you're top of mind to them. And they're like, how did she know that I'm out in six months? See what I mean? That's, that's what I'd start thinking about. Here are my social worlds up here. All free content, all good stuff. If you want to follow, say hello, hit me up, ask questions, anything you want. Um, I'm excited for all of us and I hope that this was of service and use and uh, look forward to staying in touch. Thanks guys. Yeah.